Revolution coming along at the right time. We never would have heard of communism, most of us wouldn't, if it hadn't been for Charles Darwin coming along and giving justification to that dumb idea of communism. Hoyle said, I am haunted by a conviction that the nihilistic philosophy which so-called educated opinion chose to adapt, adopt following the publication of The Origin of Species committed mankind to a course of automatic self-destruction. A doomsday was then set ticking. I agree, Fred. Once you start believing there's no God and we're in charge, then we're in trouble. There was a Russian atheist astronomer who came to America one time and he spoke at one of the universities and he said, Now folks, either there is a God or there isn't. I thought, boy, this guy's brilliant. <laughs> but then he said, both possibilities are frightening. I thought, wow, oh, that is brilliant. You see, if there is a God, we better find out who He is and find out what He wants and do what He says. Amen. If there is no God, we're in trouble. Because we're hurtling through space at 66,000 miles an hour and nobody's in charge. Pretty scary thought. Charles Darwin said, often, a cold shudder has run through me as I have asked myself whether I may have devoted myself to a fantasy. Well, Charlie, you did devote yourself to a fantasy. If you believe you came from a rock 4.6 billion years ago, you need help. You were designed for a purpose. Now, what is it? There are four great questions that every single religion in the world tries to answer. Even atheism, which is a religion, you have to believe there is no God. There's no way to know that. The four great questions every religion tries to answer. Who am I? Where did I come from? Why am I here? And where am I going when I die? The way you answer these questions depends upon how you view the world. There are basically only two ways to look at this world. One view says, you know, there's incredible design. There must be a designer. That's the creationist worldview. Other people look at the world and say, you know, nobody made it. It just made itself. They don't believe God created the heaven and the earth. They think a big bang made this world from nothing. That's called the humanist worldview. It just made itself. The first plank in the Humanist Manifesto in 1933 was the universe is self-created, self-existing, and not created. That's the first thing they have to agree to, to be a humanist. There's now been Humanist Manifesto 2 in 1973 and Humanist Mas Manifesto 3 in the year 2000. They attempt to declare what they believe. Humanism is a religion. You have to believe there is no God. So why is this theory dangerous? Evolution, I am convinced after studying this now for 30-some years, evolution is absolutely the foundation for communism, Marxism, Nazism, socialism, racism. We'll get into some more of that in a minute. Number one, I think evolution is dangerous because it's bad science based on lies. There is no scientific evidence to back up this evolution theory. We've been offering $250,000 for a long time at our ministry for somebody who could give us some real scientific evidence for evolution. It is funny, brother, to see the people try to turn stuff in. One guy said, I've got proof for evolution. I said, really, what do you have? He said, well, I'm working in the laboratory right now, and we have developed soybean plants that are resistant to frost. I said, man, that's good. That'll really be handy. I said, what did you start with? He said, well, uh, soybean plants. I said, oh, what do you have now? He said, I've got a whole new species. I said, of what? Of a uh, soybean plant. <laughs> I said, I'm sorry, sir. That's not evolution, okay? That's a variety of a soybean plant. And it's interesting, and I'm glad you're able to do that. But that's not evolution. There is no evidence whatsoever that any animal ever produced a different kind of animal. So why would anybody believe such a dumb idea? And how can this be so dangerous? Well, we'll cover some of the isms in just a minute. But evolution is based on lies and bad science. There is no good science to back it up. This textbook says, evolution is a fact. Evolution is a fact, not theory. Birds arose from non-birds and humans from non-humans. No person who pretends to any understanding of the natural world can deny these facts any more than she or he can deny that the earth is round, rotates on its axis, and revolves around the sun. Sounds like he's open-minded for a discussion, doesn't it? <laughs> this is not a fact, folks. Evolution is a mantra. They say this over and over and over, hoping it will become true. It's, it's all it is. They just keep repeating it. Oh, hope, evolution's a fact, it's a fact, it's a fact. Well, you better define what you're talking about with evolution. We do that on videotape number four, the six different meanings of this word evolution. This textbook says evolution has evidence from fossils, from structure, from molecular biology, from development. Any evidence that's used to support evolution has been proven wrong. Now, I've said many times I'm not trying to get evolution out of the schools. I just want the lies out of the textbooks. We almost got a bill passed in Arkansas a couple of years ago, and I went up to Arkansas and testified before the Senate, before the House Representatives Committee that was looking at this bill, HB 2548, I believe it was. 
And it was the bill simply said, Arkansas will not use tax dollars to purchase materials if they contain knowingly fraudulent information. We're not going to buy books that have lies in them. And it gave a few examples, like some of the examples I gave in my seminar. If it says the embryo has gill slits, we're not going to buy it. I stood up and testified for 45 minutes before this committee. After I got done, the ACLU lady, a uh, woman I mean, she got up and she said, folks, this is an obviously an anti-evolution bill. One of the representatives said, uh, ma'am, evolution is not mentioned in this bill. All this bill says is we're not going to buy books if they have lies in them, and these things are lies, so we're not going to buy that book. How can you say this is an anti-evolution bill? And she said, everything mentioned in this bill is used to support the evolution theory. And the guy said, well, ma'am, is it true that these things mentioned here are, are, are false? She said, well, yes, but obviously this is an anti-evolution bill. She knew full well. If you, took, if you took all the lies out of the textbooks, there would be nothing left to support the evolution theory. I was in a debate one time at University of West Florida. And the uh, professor got up and he said, now, Mr. Hoven, you're claiming all these things are lies, and you're right. You're, all these things have been proven wrong. But, he said, i got a question for you. You told us we've got to take all this stuff out of the book. What are you going to replace it with? <laughs> I said, uh, folks, what he's trying to not say is, uh, we want the kids to believe in evolution. We have to give them some evidence, and all we have are these lies, and you want to take these out of the book, so you better find some more evidence for my theory. I said, sir, if you don't have any evidence for your theory, I'm sorry. Maybe you ought to consider getting a new theory. I could suggest one for you, if you'd like. He did not like. <laughs> he don't want to hear about it, okay? All they have to support their theory are things that have been proven wrong many, many years ago. Here's some of the lies we covered in the first how many hours of this seminar so far. I'll just review them very, very quickly. The Colorado River was not formed slowly. Well, the Grand Canyon did not slowly form by the Colorado River running through it. Okay? The geologic column does not portray Earth's history. It does not even exist anywhere in the world. Rocks do not date the fossils. The fossils do not date the rocks. It is based on circular reasoning. We cover that on videotape number four. There are no index fossils. There's no such thing as an index fossil. The layers are not different ages. Petrified trees connecting them all prove the layers all formed at the same time. We cover that on video number four. Plants and animals are not related to each other. They have the same designer, but not the same uncle and grandpa. Change in species is not the real meaning of the word evolution. That's not really what they mean. There's a whole lot more to that. We covered that on video four. Natural selection does not cause any evolution. Natural selection selects. It doesn't create a thing. We believe in natural selection. The peppered moth story never happened. It's a lie. The comparative anatomy does not prove common ancestry. We covered that on videotape number four. Humans never have any gill slits. It's a human at conception. It's not a fish or an amphibian or anything else. And abortion is murder, plain and simple. Okay? The appendix is not vestigial. You do need your appendix. The whale does not have a vestigial pelvis. That is a lie. The human tailbone is not vestigial. If you think it is, I'll pay to have yours removed. <laughs> Dinosaurs did not live millions of years ago. Man did not evolve from animals or cavemen. The Big Bang is a big dud. It didn't happen. The horse series in your textbooks is a lie, proven wrong 50 years ago. Life cannot evolve from non-living matter, like the textbook says. The law does not ban teaching creation science, like some people want you to think. It's perfectly fine to teach creation science in the public schools. We'll get into more of that later. Smaller is not simpler. A little paramecium is more complex than a space shuttle. Smaller is not simpler. Smaller is more complex. But birds did not come from dinosaurs. Talk about a dumb idea. The eye did not arise by slow changes over billions of years. The first bird did not hatch from a reptile egg like Goldschmidt said. The trees of life in the textbooks are pure imagination. They didn't happen, folks. They drew it on paper, and that's as far as it goes. It didn't happen in reality. DNA does not prove evolution. It proves creation. It proves a designer. Fossils do not provide any evidence for evolution. Fossils don't count at all. You find a bone in the dirt, you can't prove that bone had any kids, <laughs> let alone kids that lived, and certainly not kids that were different than the grandparents. Fossils simply are a dead-end street. They don't count for evolution. The earth, was never, is, the earth is not billions of years old, and the earth was never a hot molten mass. The Pangea theory that's taught in your books never existed. They say, all the continents used to fit together. I get that all the time. Oh, do you think all the continents used to fit together? I, used to touch each other? I said, well, they still are. Just the low places are full of water. I mean, the continents are still connected, you know. <laughs> what do you mean, did they? Hello. They still are. <laughs> 
Animals and plants are designed, not adapted to their environments. There are no simple living organisms. Life did not arise three and a half billion years ago like the textbook says. The sun did not form before the earth like the textbook says. Scientists have not made life in the laboratory. Snakes do not have vestigial legs. The earth never had an oxygen-free atmosphere like the textbook says. No animal is related to any other kind of animal. DNA is more than just chemicals. It carries information. Mutations do not improve the species. Similar bone structure does not prove a common ancestor. It proves a common designer. Amino acids do not prove relationships. Humans are not related to chimps. Darwin did not prove evolution. Textbooks do not teach kids to think critically. They teach them to not think at all. Arranging animals on paper does not prove a thing. Archaeopteryx is not part reptile. It's 100% bird. Feathers do not evolve from scales. 